All right, so those that know me know I have a little bit of acting experience. Yes, was the star of the movie Rebound. That's what I did. Tap that boot. Without that being said, those that know me also know I am a combat sports commentator. That's what I do now in my full-time profession. Now, when you put those two things together, film experience, very small screen, combat sports commentator, still somewhat small screen, I had to review the latest and greatest from the notorious Conor McGregor as he made his silver screen debut. That's right, Conor McGregor as Knox in the movie remake of Roadhouse. Originally, I think this came out in the 50s or something like that. It's an older movie remade, Jake Gyllenhaal, the main character. And I want to break down this entire movie, give it a rating at the end because that's just what we do here. So, Roadhouse, the movie, the breakdown. Let's go. All right, so Roadhouse. Like I said, a remake based off the 1989 original film. The original, obviously, starring Patrick Swayze. This time around, we get Jake Gyllenhaal. And he stars as Elwood Dalton, the former UFC fighter that actually contends for the title. And apparently, it's alluded to, but I don't know if it's actually flat out said until, like, the very end of the movie that he is a disgraced UFC fighter because in his time in the UFC, he fights for the middleweight championship. And unfortunately, apparently kills his opponent by not only knocking him out but continually punching him which apparently his opponent was his his friend in the movie as well so there's there's layers to the story that maybe i missed i don't know but it seems like they just kind of glossed over the fact that <laughs> elwood dalton killed a guy who also happened to be his friend in the octagon during a sanctioned ufc fight so anyway he is now apparently disgraced and he's he's living on the mint he's in some town somewhere where he's now fighting in back rooms and and like secret underground warehouse human cockfighting essentially and the first scene is actually post malone doing the song and acting as a guy that's this big tough fighter and he's on a six fight win streak in this underground league and everyone's betting on him and all of a sudden you see elwood dalton living out of his car literally a bum gets out puts a hoodie on and then walks into the venue and uh before they can even start the fight he takes the hoodie off everyone sees who he is and immediately are petrified for their lives because once again even though it hasn't been explained yet and actually kind of isn't really he killed a guy in a ufc fight so uh no one wants to fight him he ends up winning the money but this is where he meets another main character of this story, Frankie, who owns the roadhouse down in the West Keys, Florida. She's come all the way to this undisclosed location to meet the guy that Dalton was supposed to fight. But instead, she wants the guy that everyone's terrified of, good reason, makes sense, to come back and clean up her bar. Now, you'd think they'd have authorities for that and that there would be some other way other than hiring a bouncer that's going to be able to whip everyone's ass every single night to keep your bar clean. But apparently in the town he ends up in, Glass Key, the police don't do their job at all. And in fact, they're doing the job of some other people as well. Now when Frankie meets Dalton, he is stabbed in the stomach by a random goer that's bet on these underground fights and didn't bet on Elwood Dalton, obviously. So anyway, Frankie ends up offering Dalton this job down in the West Keys. He goes off to sleep in his car. And then has a near-death experience where he drives onto some railroad tracks and tries to potentially end it all and then actually decides maybe not Gets close to death and says you know what i'll go work as a bouncer at this bar this will turn my life around from there we get him meeting up with a bookstore clerk and his daughter which become pretty big parts of the story tangentially like they're in dalton's mind they're a very big part of the story actually what they do in the story doesn't make a lot of sense but they're there and they make friends with dalton so Keep that in mind because while he won't say it he is always going to protect his friend after he killed the one apparently that was a ufc fight you get the first introduction of dalton at the roadhouse protecting it and finding ways to show the other people that already worked there how to protect it as well he's he's fitting into his role pretty easily and then we're introduced to a biker gang that shows up and uh is just terrorizing the roadhouse seemingly for no reason of course there's a reason but we don't know that yet they're there to clear out the roadhouse so that multi-millionaire trust fund kid mogul ben brandt who's the son of a former kind of ipso facto rich guy mob boss in the area in glass keys is now taking on his father's legacy and is trying to build out some high-rise buildings and multi-million dollar whatever he's essentially trying to make it a nice place for all the rich people well frankie roadhouse owner says nah nah that's not happening which is why we brought dalton in without telling him it's why the biker gang is there to once again 
destroy the Roadhouse. And Jake Gyllenhaal plays an odd version of Dalton here. He's like a somewhat socially awkward nice guy, but at the same time will beat the fuck out. Which is essentially what he does to this biker gang. And leaves them all messed up. So they go scurrying back to the main villain guy, Ben, which is where we are introduced to the main character in my mind and the reason I wanted to even break this movie down, Conor McGregor as Knox. Conor in this movie is the star. He is, he is the guy that makes this thing work. Because outside of him, this movie sucks. I'm sorry, it's not good. <laughs> it's just a, a, a remake of an old movie that they're trying to do something with here, but it's, it's loaded with stars without any real motivation. It feels almost wooden, right? It's like, Jake Gyllenhaal's there. He's doing his thing as Dalton. Dalton's trying to just make some money. The other guy, Ben, is the crazy rich kid that's spoiled and wants his way. Like, we've seen that kind of thing play out over and over. And even Dalton with the girlfriend here, Ellie, she's not... It doesn't even feel like they like each other at most points in this movie. But none of that matters. Because Conor McGregor is here to save the day. Knox gets introduced as he's fucking jumping out of some villa. I think in Italy. Butt-ass naked after... <laughs> I'm not joking. After essentially fucking some guy's wife. She's having an affair with my man Knox. He jumps out. The only thing he's wearing is a chain that says Knox. They covered up Conor McGregor's tattoos with tattoos that just say Knox. One's like a dragon on his chest and like another one on his arm. He's got like a psycho T on the back of his back. It's amazing. And so he starts walking down the streets of, again, I think this is Italy, but ass naked. They show Conor McGregor's actual ass cheeks. And I got to admit, that man's caked up. He was caked up. I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm keeping it real with you guys. There wasn't no pancakes here. This was fluffy cake central. And the whole point of the introduction to Knox is he is this higher gun, essentially, without the gun. He is a higher badass to come take care of Dalton. And he's called by the rich, spoiled kid, Ben's father, who's in jail, serving time for whatever reason. And Knox has to come down to Glass Key in the... Florida Keys and take care of Dalton, the guy that everyone apparently has to know about because of what happened on this UFC pay-per-view. Anyway, from there, again, I'm just going to focus on Conor McGregor because he's the best part of this movie. He shows up in Florida and meets the biker gang crew that all got their asses whipped by Dalton and the rich kid. And you can already tell there's going to be a little bit of a struggle here from rich kid telling Knox, Conor McGregor, what to do and Conor McGregor saying, Nah, fuck all that. I'm going to do exactly what I wanted. <laughs> He's not a bad actor. I'm sorry. Connor's not a terrible actor. He does well for what he's given. Now, yes, you can tell some of the lines are a little bit clunky and awkward. It seemed like they were voiceover after the fact, but facial expressions are good. He looks like a legitimate badass and a guy that doesn't give a single fuck mate about anything other than what he was hired to do. So now we get the first showdown from Knox and Dalton. Uh, they roll back through to the club and Knox has got this driver that you would use on a golf course that is apparently his weapon of choice now. Uh, he rolls up with the biker gang, walks up in there. Oh, by the way, sorry, at this point I've completely skipped over it. Dalton has killed one of the biker gang guys that tried to come and kill him on a boat by feeding him to a crocodile. Doesn't really have any significance in the plot of the story. It's just something I kind of skipped over because what the fuck? But Knox shows up looking for Dalt, right? You saw it in the previews. Dalton, it looks like you're having a smashing night, right? And he's taking his club and he's like passive aggressively, but more on the aggressively starting to destroy this club. He takes the driver, smashes it into the table, which sets off an entire bar fight. Everyone in the venue starts fighting. But again, Knox was there for one man and one man only. Dalton. So again, we hit the first face off between Knox and Dalton, and it's a full on drag out bar fight. Fucking everyone swinging on everyone. Dalton and Knox are back and forth. Gyllenhaal, McGregor. And again, the fight seemed pretty good. Like again, you're talking about Conor McGregor, who is not only a, a great MMA fighter, but his practice of fighting is a karate base with a bit of capoeira. It seemed like a lot of Conor McGregor influence. You saw him going to the to the classics, right? His karate stance, his backhand uppercuts, his lead hooks, his spinning back kicks. There was a definite touch from Conor McGregor on this movie as far as how much he was able to do with the fight choreography. And Gyllenhaal, to be fair to him, didn't lag behind as much as you thought he would. He did a good job with what they gave him. But you could definitely tell who was more comfortable, obviously, in these fight scenes. And Connor was just that. He was just way more comfortable doing those things. And again, he was presented like a badass, which made you forget almost that Connor wasn't acting. Like, Connor is not even an actor. He's just being Connor McGregor in this role of Knox turned up to like a thousand. So anyway, they have this, this, this fight. 
And at the end of it, there's an important moment where Knox has beaten the teetotal shit out of Dalton, right? He's whooped him, straight up whooped him. But Dalton, the main character, just will not go away, just won't stop. And he looks at him and he says something like, you're, you're, you're different, you know, you're, you just don't know when to quit. There's something wrong with you, mate. Something like that. And after he says it, he goes, yeah. Me too. You have these two guys that understand each other because they are so different. And as Knox is learning, even underneath this Mr. Rogers kind of thing that Dalton does, he's just as fucking crazy when you get underneath all of the stuff that makes him angry. So from there, Dalton is introduced to the, I think the sheriff at this point. I can't remember if this is before or after, but he's introduced to the sheriff, which is the love interest's father in this case. So Ellie's dad is the sheriff, but he's working with the bad guy, Ben. So it's all a little bit convoluted. Essentially, the sheriff wants Dalton to stay away from Ellie and also stay away from Glass Key because he's the only thing standing between the rich, spoiled kid, Ben, and his big entrepreneurial success of all this different real estate he wants to build and to take out the roadhouse, which again, you forget is the main point of this whole thing for him to take over the roadhouse. So we, that seems like a second tier, third tier storyline to <laughs> Knox and Dalton having their final showdown. Honestly, that's what it like. That's the way I looked at it. I was like, I don't give a shit about this roadhouse shit. Like take the roadhouse for all I care. I just want to see Knox and Dalton fighting. So after being thoroughly whipped in his confrontation with Knox, Dalton says, fuck this dude. I'm done. I'm leaving West keys. I'm leaving glass key. I'm leaving it all. I don't want any more parts of this. I'm out. So he's about to leave, and just as he's about to get on the bus, which he came in on, the little bus he rode in on, to leave, he goes back to the bookstore with the clerk and the daughter there, ones that gave him a book, and he sees that it's been burned or it has been caught on fire. Arsonists at play. Another thing Ben and the rich kid spoiled gang was trying to do to get Dalton to leave. And ironically, the one thing that makes him stay. So you have that little plot device. Again, cares about people. Even if he doesn't want to say it, he'll find a way to protect him. This is the whole thing you're learning about Dalton. He's not just a killer. He is a good person, I guess. So, just as he was about to leave, he decides, you know what? No, I'm going to burn. They want to burn the bookstore down. I'm going to burn the whole operation down. So, now he's pissed. And he is putting some shit together. Apparently, he stole some of the explosives from Knox that he had on him or something. He's going to go and, and, like I said, blow the whole thing up. Well, here comes the sheriff. You guys remember the dad of the love interest. I know I'm not doing a great job of putting two and two together, but neither did the movie. So there's that. He comes up to Dalton and says, hey, they got my daughter. They took her. And because you stole some money from my boss, which apparently happened at some point, I forgot when and where, because you stole my boss's money, because you stole the rich boy's money, we're going to need that back or he's going to kill my daughter, which didn't sound convincing in the least bit. Maybe it was supposed to be that way. Because come to find out there was like a double, double cross down the line here where the daughter was actually stolen and being held on a boat that the dad was on with the rich kid because they were working together. But the rich kid didn't tell the dad that he stole the daughter. So he double crossed him and then there was another double. It's very weird. It was a very odd plot device to get to the fact that, okay, yeah, he stole the daughter. Dalton decides, all right, I'm going to go after the girl, right? You stole the girl. You stole my girlfriend. We had a nice time on the boat. You stole her. I'm going after her. So he he grabs a boat, goes to the the, the rich boy's boat way out in the in the ocean, and has this whole plan set up. He doesn't have the money with him, but he's got something else. Those explosives, right? So they have this back and forth on the boat. Yada yada. Where's the girl? Need the girl? Sorry, ain't getting the girl. Unless you got the money. Don't got the money. Well, I guess you're not getting the girl. Then boom, Dalton pulls the freaking ace out of the sleeve. He's rigged explosives to the boat he came in on. Bang. Blows it up. Blows up. Pretty much fucking everything. And just as this is happening, guess who comes in to save the day and save this movie once again? It's none other than the notorious Conor McGregor, mate. He, again, knocks. Once again, showing his prowess to be in a fight. And to accomplish the mission, which is to kill Dalton. He rolls up at another boat. Now, like I said, there's this big explosion. People get thrown from the boat. Dalton's looking for the girl, finds the girl down in the bottom of the boat. They escape, and now they're all swimming around as the boat sinks. Both of them are swimming around. He's fucking fighting people. And somehow the girl ends up on one of the boats that actually survives. She's like, yo, Dalton, you know what I'm saying? Come through. Instead, the rich boy then gets on the boat, and he's going to drive her away. He's going to fuck all this. We're going back to the roadhouse, and I'll just, I'll destroy it myself. Fuck it. If you can't do it, fine, I'll do it myself. Well, Dalton's not having any of that, so he's swimming toward the boat, but here comes Knox. Somehow, he's like trying to run over Dalton, and Dalton snags onto the side of the boat, gets onto the boat after kicking his way up there, and they have this, this back and forth, and there's, there's, there's one thing about this movie that irks me. It's the comedy lines in the fights where Dalton gets on the boat, right, and Knox is standing there. Conor McGregor, Jake Gyllenhaal. And Conor says, oh, look at it. We got our own octagon. <laughs> it's, it's 
not an octagon they're on a boat and John Hall's like someone really needs to teach you shapes I'm like okay we didn't need this this commentary but anyway they're fighting fighting boom 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 and then somehow Dalton gets the better of Knox right Jillian Hall gets the better of Conor McGregor throws him off the boat but McGregor holds on because he's got the fucking weighted anchor that you would have for a boat he's holding on to it as it's dragging forward toward this other boat that's sprinting toward the roadhouse so then Rich Boy decides it's a good idea because he could just instead of just outrunning them to the roadhouse and then beating him on land and fighting him there no we're gonna play chicken with the two boats so he doubles back Boats are now swimming at each other, right? Head-on collision. Boom! Everyone goes flying. Jillian Hall jumps off. And somehow, and again, this is like some Fast and Furious shit. You have to suspend some disbelief. He jumps off his boat and snags onto the big boat that was running at him with the girl and the rich boy. This is one of the funnier scenes from Connor. They get him... As he's being dragged behind his original boat, he goes flying. And you just hear, ah! And he just, like, flies through the fucking water. You think, okay, maybe maybe Knox has been taken care of finally, right? This has been a big plot point. He keeps getting this close to being taken care of. So now you have Rich Boy, Dalton, and the girlfriend on the same boat. And they're headed toward, once again, the roadhouse. Like, directly headed at it. And it's clear that there's no intention on stopping the boat. The boat is going to keep going and it's going to fly directly into the side of this restaurant. So homeboy Dalton and the girlfriend, they did. Rich boy decides, fuck it. I've been gotten my ass beat. I can't get off the boat in time. Drives it straight into the freaking <laughs> restaurant. Drives the boat straight into Boom. it. Boom. Somehow survives that. I don't know how. And then we cut to Knox, Conor McGregor as the fucking Terminator, apparently. As he survives the boat crash, he's climbing up the side of a bridge, somehow still alive, still intact, and just stops a random car and, and steals the car from So him. as that happens, we go back to the, the roadhouse, which has been caved in by a fucking boat. And Dalton is now trying to fight the rich boy. He's, he's shooting a, a gun at him. Dalton and him go back and forth, and Dalton's beating the shit out of the rich boy, breaks his nose. He's walking up on him. About to deliver the final blow because remember, when he's upset, that's when he'll really fucking kill you. And just as he's about to do it, Conor McGregor once again saves the day, drives a truck through. Again, this is the second vehicle now that's been put through this roadhouse. Drives a fucking truck through the front door. Boom! Knocks down Dalton. I don't know how he doesn't kill him because he was hit at, at least 20 miles an hour. I don't know how you die, don't die from that. So here we go with the big fight. The final in sequence. And this is the best scene of the movie. It is. This is the best one. Because you get what we all came here for. Do we really care that the roadhouse was being trampled on or potentially going to be extinguished from existence for this rich boy to move in some brand new multi-million dollar properties no no one cares about that that's not why we watch this movie we watched this movie because we wanted to see one how conor mcgregor's acting was which by the way impressed me and two the fight scenes that Connor would be involved with Jake Gyllenhaal. How would it look? What is really going to happen there? That's all the thing was marketed on. It's all we cared about. And here it is, the last one. And this was a banger. Inside of one specific part that we'll get to. You see him in his stance and he's fainting. And this was a cool little bonus because you got to see that these two were not only fighting men, but you see a little bit of Dalton's MMA background. Right? He takes specific things and catching kicks on the side and trying to gator roll with them or... Again, using his hands to try to block and parry shots. It was a cool back and forth. And again, you lost yourself a little bit in this fight scene because it became more intense in this moment than anything else in the movie was. Not when people were fucking killed. So anyway, they keep fighting, keep fighting, and then boom. Dylan Hall gets on Connor's back, right? Dalton on Knox. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep the names together for you guys. And again, you see a little bit more of that MMA influence. He goes for a rear naked choke, right? Or a bulldog choke, essentially. But then he fashions it into a rear naked choke and he's gonna choke out uh, Knox and Knox says something to him he's like what are you gonna kill me now I thought we had to be friends boys so again that's that's kind of the big reveal that Dalton actually killed the guy in the UFC I, I think that's like the, the main reveal that he actually did it which was like kind of a throwaway line but maybe you have to like catch it I don't know. I guess Dalton is struggling with it maybe he will maybe he won't I don't know but they roll to the ground and Connor using some MMA tactics right? he's fighting the choke can and then he looks and grabs a weapon which is I think it's just a, a shank of, of sorts right piece of a chair it's like a piece of wood out of a chair he takes it boom gets out of the choke stabs Dalton in the stomach almost at the same spot he got stabbed earlier in the in the movie and then as Dalton is laying on the ground, Gyllenhaal's like, oh my God, I've been stabbed. Here comes Rich Boy. Somehow he's still alive. He's like, you fucking kill him. Talking to Conor McGregor. Kill him. Kill that motherfucker. And Conor does the thing we all wanted to see happen. 
during this movie. Shut the rich boy up. He goes, what does it take to shut you up? Takes his neck. Shing. Doesn't stab him or that was no shing, but he breaks his fucking neck. Rich boy collapses to the ground. Now Connor is looked at as the big bad. He's the real villain. Like, shut up. I got to deal with this mano y mano. You're taken away from the thing everybody wants to see. The two badasses go back and forth. That was dope. That was one of the cooler parts of the movie. Just, yeah. Ripped his neck open. Cool. So now, because of the time it took for him to do that, right? Now he's got Dalton with one fucking stake, wooden stake in his side. He's going to grab another shiv that's laying around, another piece of a broken chair, and he's going to stab him, right? He goes to do it. Boom. Not quite. Dalton, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal fighting for some sort of redemption in this moment. Stops him. Takes the shiv out of his own stomach. Stabs Connor with it. Takes the other one as Connor drops it. Takes that one. Boom. Stabs him in his chest as well. And then just starts going to Stabby Town with the same ones. Taking them out of certain holes and put them in another. Fucking going to Stabby Town. Bow, 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 bow. Then takes two of them. Shoom. Right in the chest piece of Connor McGregor. McGregor falls to the ground and it makes it look as though Dalton has killed Conor McGregor. He's killed Knox. He's taken down his enemy. And that is essentially where the movie ends to a degree, right? Dalton takes the money that he had stashed away and was hiding and gives it to the bookstore owners because their place had been burned down and secretly he liked them. They were friends. And the roadhouses had their evil villain taken care of. The rich boy is dead because his neck is snapped. Knox is presumed dead. He's laying there on the ground and they're trying to re-clean up and build the roadhouse back and, and start the roadhouse again. Which again, me personally, I couldn't give a shit about. I wanted to know more about what happened to Knox. Which we found out because as the movie ends and Dalton gets on the bus to go find his next adventure in the roaming nomad life of a killer that is also a somewhat nice guy and has some social anxiety. The credits roll and guess who shows up once again? They go to a hospital. And on the hospital doors, you see blood on the window panes and people yelling and screaming and, oh my God, and boom, the doors fly open and there's Mr. Knox, a.k.a. Conor McGregor. He's in his patient's gown and he walks through the doors, busts them open. They get a camera pan view. He's leaving the hospital. Knox is alive. And once again, his ass cheeks are out and showing for everyone as he does the Conor McGregor Billy strut through the lobby out the doors. Potentially Roadhouse 2. I don't know. Knox still lives. Uh, yeah, that's where the movie ends. Listen, this was a long review. We're probably gonna have to chop this up a little more uh, because you guys know I like to talk. This was not a great movie. Maybe not even a good movie, but one that I kept on watching because I wanted to see what happened with Conor McGregor. To be in the movie like he was with names like Jake Gyllenhaal and some other actors that I don't know necessarily the names of, but I've seen before. This was a big moment for Conor and honestly, it's probably gonna propel him to other movie parts like i've seen a lot worse first debuts in movies for people i mean fuck the rock did scorpion king as one of his first movies and that was trash so who knows where conor mcgregor could actually go i thought he did well i thought they utilized him in the right way which is something i don't think could be said for a lot of other characters here but overall out of 10 i think if i'm gonna rate this movie maybe a little bit below average i think i'll go four out of ten because i do honestly think conor's involvement saves it a little bit from being just completely preposterous and making almost no sense. So there it is, man. My Roadhouse review. The MVP, the star of this cast, the award winner goes to Conor McGregor. In my opinion, Knox stole the show. But outside of that, you guys let me know what you think. Am I wrong on this one? Was this just cinema to the highest degree? Or was it, like I said, a bit of a chaotic, nonsensical, plot device gripping and driven movie that outside of the fight scenes was just kind of meh. As you guys know, I ask the questions, I don't have those answers. So, as this movie continues to get more reviews and potentially as Conor McGregor gets into more cinema, guess we'll find out.